Hey there, Saki here from Saki Tech and in today's video I want to quickly talk about the 3D Touch feature on the iPhones. Now as you know 3D Touch is available on any iPhone 6s or higher. Of course including all the way up to the iPhone 10. So what I want to do is I want to revisit the 3D Touch features and functionality on the iPhone 10 so you get a complete grip on how to use this nice feature. So basically, as you know, the screen on the iPhone 10 is pressure sensitive, so it can actually sense what amount of pressure you're actually pressing onto the screen. Uh, basically, this allows you to access two functionalities. Uh, the first one is called the quick actions. So as you can see, we have a bunch of apps here. What you can do is uh, on most of the apps, uh, you can press and hold and it's going to bring a quick action menu uh, from which where you can start to perform some functions really quickly without actually going into the application itself. So that's the calendar. Uh, on the top there's a widget. Uh, the widget shows you what's happening next and at the bottom you have other options you can play with such as adding an event. Now if I tap this it's going to launch the calendar. It's going to allow me to add a brand new event. Uh, other things with the photos for example if I tap on this you, you will be getting uh, different kinds of functionalities from every little thing. So here I'm getting a little preview of my photos and at the bottom I'm getting a bunch of options. I can search, I can look at photos from a year ago, I can go to my favorites really quick and all that good stuff from the photos. Uh, with the camera if you press and hold again the quick action menu pops up. Uh, you can tap to take a selfie, tap to record a video, tap to record a slow motion video or take a portrait shot. And if you click any one of these options, it takes you directly into that option uh, so you can immediately start recording a video if you tap this or take a selfie. It's going to launch the front camera so you can take a quick selfie immediately. Okay, so 3D Touch quick actions apply to just about all the apps uh, that the iPhone comes with, but you'll be able to find some other functionality on non-Apple apps, meaning apps you download from the App Store. Uh, for example, I have a Crunchyroll application here. It's a video uh, service. If I press and hold, as you can see, it allows me to share the Crunchyroll app with a friend. So if I tap this, uh, it's going to bring up the share screen from where I can share the application with anybody that I want. There's the GameStop application. If I press and hold, you can do the same thing. So it really depends on the developer on how much detail they want to add. And uh, just going back to the, some of the some of the Apple-related apps. So Mail here, if you press and hold, uh, as you can see, you have all these options here. You can even click here and it's going to ask, uh, quickly create a new email message so you can start typing right away instead of going into mail and navigating to compose a new message. If you go to the app store, press and hold it, you have a bunch of options. You can search, redeem, and you can also look at all your purchased apps right from here. Okay, so it's not a bad feature at all. If you press and hold on the clock, you can see all these. Let me do a couple more so you can take a look at it. If you're not familiar, now some of these apps, as I told you, they also get a widget view, so you can get the widget view right here. And then at the bottom, you can also tap on some of the quick cities. So if I tap on New York, it'll take me right in there to show me the weather for New York, okay? If I tap on stocks, it'll show me some of the stocks that I am following. And then uh, at the bottom, you can go to search stocks. Now, one more thing you'll see with some of the quick actions is if you tap and hold, uh, it'll say on the top corner of the bottom window, it's going to say add a widget. So if you tap that, that will add a widget to your widgets screen. So let me try with the music. So if I press and hold music, you have two portions. So the bottom portion here has the add widget option. If I tap this, it says widget added. And if I swipe over and if I scroll all the way down, you'll see that a music widget was added to my widget screen on my side screen. Okay, so some of the apps are going to allow you to do that as well. So that's the quick actions. Now let's move on and take a look at peak and pop, which is another functionality of 3D Touch. All right, so peak and pop allows you to peek into data and then pop into it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me launch photos over here. Here's a bunch of photos in my favorites album. Uh, let's say I don't want to actually go into the photo, but I just want to peek into the photo. So what you can do is you can do a light press and as you know the screen senses the amount of pressure you place on the screen and just peek into the photo and if you don't want to actually go into it you can let it go. So that's called peeking. Peek. Peek. Okay. 
And uh, if you want to actually see the photo, you pop into it. So I'm peeking right now, but if I keep pressing harder, it's going to pop into that picture. So that's why they call it peek and pop. Now peek and pop does give you some other functions that a lot of people are not aware of. Uh, basically, as you're peeking into something, uh, if you see an arrow on the top of the image, for example, as we can see, there's an upwards arrow right there. You can actually pull it up like this and it brings up a, a couple options. So as you're peeking, just pull up slightly and then you get a bunch of options relating to the item that you are peeking into. So you can copy the picture, you can share the picture, you can make it on favorite. Uh, you can show photos from this day, the same day this was taken. You want to see other photos just like it. You have all the options and you can delete that stuff. So Peek and Pop has a little bit more functionality. Now, if you go to different apps, it's going to give you different options. So if I go to the mail application, let's say I want to peek into this guy right here. So I can peek into email too. As you can see, I'm peeking into the email. Okay. And one once more, if I'm just uh, peeking, just taking a look, I can, or I can pop into it. And that actually uh, enables the, enables me to go into the photo, uh, into the email in this case. So let me peek one more time here by doing a light press. And then this time, instead of popping into it, let me just slide this card up and it gives me all the options such as reply, forward, mark, notify me, move message. And again, you can do this kind of stuff in your text messages, in your phone and many other apps uh, across the platform. And quickly going back to quick actions, if you press and hold on the actual folders, for example, if you have a folder and if you do a press and hold, it does give you a couple options. You can access uh, uh, the, the apps that have any notifications are going to pop right there. And then on the top, you can actually rename the folder using the quick actions menu. Okay, so it'll take you right there and you can change the actual um, uh, name of that folder. Let's click done here. There we go. Back in business. Let me show you one more thing on the iMessage with the peek and pop just so you see the uh, the how many things you can do with the peek and pop. So if I go into my text messages here, let's say I want to peek into a message actually before actually going into it, I can peek into it. And then again, I can pop into it if I wanted to, or I can peek into it and pull it up, pull the card up. And it gives me some quick responses I can use, uh, such as thank you, thanks, okay. It can anticipate what I want to say to the person and you can quickly have a conversation that way. Or if you tap custom, it'll take you in and you can start actually uh, typing your custom message. All right. And one more thing, if you go back into the iMessage, for example, let's say somebody sent you a link uh, in iMessage. Maybe they told you to go watch a YouTube video or maybe they sent you a link to a website. What you can do is uh, here we have a google.com. I just sent it to myself uh, to create an example. Uh, I can also peek and pop into this guy. So if I peek into it, it's going to generate a preview of the actual website. I can let it go if I don't want to go inside it, right? You peek before you want to go in. So I peek into it. If I like it, I just tap it. It pops right into actual google.com. So you can do this also with hyperlinks, with photos and other data as well. And of course, let's not forget that 3D Touch actually applies in other areas as well. So if I were to pull down the control center, uh, there's a bunch of buttons here and just about every single one of these buttons can be pressed using 3D Touch. So if I press and hold on this, it's going to expand, give you more options. Uh, if I touch on this, it's going to expand, give you more options. Uh, if I touch on this, it's going to also expand and give you more options. So all these options here are 3D touchable. Okay, so if I tap on this one, I can increase or decrease the brightness just like that. Uh, I can access some extra functionality. And with the volume again, I can just, you know, 3D touch it and then just decrease the volume if I wanted to and all that good stuff. And I can do the same thing with all these guys. Okay, so 3D touch does apply in other areas as well. Now, if I were to pull down the notifications panel, uh, I can press and hold on the X button here, right here. And that's going to bring up a menu that allows me to clear all notifications. So if I tap this, all notifications are in fact gone. And finally, a lot of people don't actually use 3D Touch. And it's something you can actually enable or disable if you don't want to use it. So what you want to do, and also there's some other settings you can also change. So I'm going to show you that really quick. And that's going to be the last thing for the video. So if you go to the settings, and if you go to general, and if you go to uh, accessibility right here, 
If you keep scrolling down a little bit, you'll see a 3D touch menu. You can tap this thing right here and you can actually disable 3D touch. Now it's gone. So if I go back out here, uh, I cannot perform any kind of press and hold on any of these apps. Instead, the apps are to wiggle so I can remove them, right? So 3D touch is gone. But you can also enable it. And on top of enabling it, you can actually set the sensitivity uh, by which 3D touch actually works. So you can uh, set it to light. And uh, we can preview it right here. So a light press will bring up the peaking option, okay? Light press to peak and not very hard to pop. Uh, you can do medium. So you have to press a little bit harder to peek in and a little bit harder to pop into it. And of course, you can also do very firm. So you have to actually press firmly, not too firm, uh, but firmer than medium and light to actually peek into it. It's a nice way to fine tune uh, your use of the 3D touch. Okay, so you can preview it right here as soon as you set it. So let's go right back out. And that was the final thing I wanted to talk about. And that's basically everything I wanted to talk about in regards to 3D Touch. I wanted to quickly revisit this and make people aware of it. Uh, for those of you who may have forgotten about it, or maybe for those of you that do not even know about it. Okay, and remember, 3D Touch works on any iPhone that is going to be above the 6S, such as the 6S, 6S Plus, 7, 7 Plus, and so on and so forth, all the way to the iPhone 10. Guys, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech and give this video a thumbs up. And if you do have any questions, comments, concerns, just drop it down below. Do not forget to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Saki Tech Online. Have a fantastic day.